wake up to save the day. That means that Mighty Mouse is on the way. Hi, this is Joe Cohen, and welcome to my video blog, Just Saying. I just read where the Dodgers brought back Sandy Koufax to spring training as an instructor, and he was in uniform. A lot of teams do that with their former stars, maybe to give a tip or two, but more so to inspire them to do their best. ESPN made a big deal out of it because Sandy Koufax had not been around Dodger spring training for over 10 years, let alone wear the Dodger uniform. But they felt this was pretty big, and it got me thinking a little bit about Sandy Koufax and old number 32. Sandy Koufax was a boyhood hero of mine. To me, and all the other Jewish kids in the neighborhood, he was the guy you could identify with. He was a fellow Lanzmann. He was the Jewish superstar who in 1965 wouldn't pitch on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. That was huge! The following day through six hittings, let up two runs, but lost in game two. He then started game five and tossed a four hit complete game shutout. Game seven, with two days rest, Walter Alston called upon Koufax to pitch. On Thursday, October 14th, 1965, Game 7 took place at the Twins Home Park, Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota. It was there Sandy Koufax threw his second complete game of the World Series. It was a dandy three-hit shutout, striking out 10 to bring the title home to the City of Angels. Although Sandy Koufax started his Major League career at age 19 in 1955, he really didn't start to blossom to legendary status until he was about 25 years old in 1961. From then, during each regular season, Sandy was outrageous. But during the World Series the Dodgers were in, he was legendary. In 1961 and 62, his stats were as dominant as any pitcher in the majors. However, it was his final four seasons, from 63 to 66, where he earned his reputation as the best left-handed pitcher in the history of the game. This was even more miraculous, because from 64 through 66, Sandy suffered from severe arthritis in the elbow of his throwing arm. Every time he threw a pitch, he hurt. In 1963, Sandy Koufax was the National League Most Valuable Player and the Cy Young Award winner. In 65 and 66, Koufax again won the Cy Young Award and finished both years second in MVP voting. His 1965 World Series pitching performance earned Koufax a World Series MVP too. The last game Koufax pitched was the second game in the 1966 World Series losing 6 to nothing against rookie sensation Jim Palmer, otherwise known as Cakes Palmer, and the Baltimore Orioles, who swept the Dodgers in four. In game two, although Koufax gave up four runs in six innings, only one run was earned. I remember watching that game as well as game one and three on TV. In the fifth inning of the scoreless game, Dodger center fielder Willie Davis committed three errors, missing two fly balls and throwing the ball away after missing the second of the inning. I was 10 years old at the time and so happy my birds won. You know what? I don't remember when I started calling the birds the O's. What I do remember is staring at my tickets to game four and I couldn't wait to witness history. On Sunday, October the 9th, 1966, I sat in upper section eight with my Uncle Jack while my dad sat in the press box covering the game for the evening capital. In that game, my favorite Oriole of all time, Frank Robinson, hit a solo shot over the left field wall, scoring the only run of the game as we swept the Dodgers in four. Shortly after the 66 series, I read that Koufax was retiring. At the time, I had no idea how much pain he was in. But mostly, 
I had no idea how incredible his accomplishments were. I want to go over how remarkable Sandy Koufax was. In the span of four seasons, from 1962 through 1965, Sandy Koufax threw a no-hitter each year. He was the first major leaguer to pitch four no-hitters. He capped his four no-hitter performance in the September 9, 1964 one to nothing victory over the Chicago Cubs, throwing a perfect game. In the last four seasons of his career, Sandy Koufax's average record was 24-7 per season. His average season earn run average was 1.86. He averaged pitching 298 innings per season and averaged 307 strikeouts per season. In 1965, Koufax struck out 382 batters. The most amazing statistic, and something modern day fans simply cannot understand or comprehend, was in the last four seasons of his career, Sandy Koufax averaged 22 complete games per season. Unbelievable! Koufax went out with a bang in 66. He was 27 and 9 with a 1.73 ERA, 27 complete games, 5 shutouts, pitched 323 innings, striking out 317. Thanks for watching my video blog, just saying. The segment about Sandy Koufax meant a lot to me, and I hope it means something to you too. Next time I'll be back to talk about the University of Maryland lacrosse team and the championship run it's going to make in 2013. Just saying.